Resistors, capacitors and inductors or coils are the most important basic passive components in electronics. You can find coils very often in different situations. That's a coil, that's a coil, that's a coil, that is a motor, which consists of coils. That's a transformer, which is also made out of two coils. And that's a relay, which does also consists of a coil. You get what I mean. So in this video, let's talk about the basics of inductors and why they are so important. Let's get started. First of all, let's get one foundation straight. When current flows through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around it. More current means a bigger field. We can even measure this field by using my current probe, which then calculates it to a current value. But don't overdo the current flow, otherwise our wire can't handle it and starts glowing. This is actually one basic characteristic value of a coil, the maximum current. As an experiment, let's see how the voltage of our mains power looks like. It's a beautiful sine wave. Now I use the probe to see whether I'm a voltage source. Hmm, this looks familiar, but why? Well, the magnetic field of our mains wires, which are all around us inside our volts, induces small voltage onto us because we are basically a big antenna. Speaking of induction, we induce a voltage if a conductor moves inside a magnetic field, like a AC motor right here, or a DC motor, or when a magnetic field is changing its intensity, like it happens with all AC signals. But the magnetic field of plain wire is quite weak and cannot even lift up this nail. That is why we can wind up our wire to create a bigger length which increases our magnetic force. But it is still not strong enough, so we have to use a ferromagnetic material, for example iron, as a core to enhance our field. This does the trick. And we have successfully created an electromagnet. Relays use such a trick to trigger a switch that can handle high AC currents. Depending on the dimensions, windings and ferromagnetic core of your coil, it can create a weak or a strong field. This property is represented with the value inductance, which is measured in Henry. You can measure the inductance with an RLC meter, which is a bit expensive. Or you can calculate it through different measurements, but that is far beyond this basics video. Now let's see what a coil does in a DC circuit. In such a circuit, the voltage can only switch on or off. It's pretty simple. I simulate it here with a square wave signal, which is connected to an amplifier and then a coil and LED with current limiting resistor. Normally, with a resistor LED combination, the current would follow our voltage signal without a problem. But now with the coil, current does not follow our voltage immediately and takes a bit of time to reach its final state. With more inductance, this can take longer and with less inductance of our coil, it can take less time. But why? The reason is called Lenz law. The voltage at our circuit lets current flow. This current starts creating a magnetic field, which induces a voltage into the coil itself, which produces an induced current. And Lenz law says that such a current will always oppose the change it produces. Sounds complicated. But in a nutshell, it says we want current to flow, so our coil will hinder it as good as it can. Or we want current to stop flowing, so our coil will use the energy of its magnetic field to pump current into the circuit again and hinder us again as good as it can. Seems like coils are plain annoying, but we can use them to our advantage. The energy stored in an inductor is L divided by 2, multiplied by I squared. And we use this energy, for example in boost converters, to get 5 volts out of 3.7 volt batteries. 
Here is the circuit. Firstly, we close this switch to create the magnetic field around our coil. Then we open the switch. Now our coil pumps the energy into our circuit and rises the output voltage at the end. But we also have to be careful. Here I'm using a PWM signal to adjust the speed of a motor. Since the motor consists mostly of coils, we have a problem when our transistor switch closes. The coil tries to push the energy inside the open circuit, which produces a huge electron axis and thus big voltage spikes, which can easily destroy our transistor. So we use a flyback diode to protect our switch by offering the current a way to flow. Or we use a coil at the output of a step-down converter or switching power supply so that we have an energy storage which keeps our output voltage at a constant level. Now you know how inductors behave in DC circuits. Check back with part 2 to find out about frequency filters, reactants and basically how coils behave in AC circuits. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more electronics basics, stay creative and I will see you next time.